I mean, like the road's on the Michelin map and it says recognised track. I'm not sure who's ever recognised it. Meet the tribes of Africa, the brochure had said. Forget the tribes, get out of Ethiopia. There'll be more tribes for you on the way. You'll pick up good things. People yeah, will be in a better humour. We'll be healthier. At least we'll be eating. Yeah. Maybe we'll be able to laugh every now and again. But it's too hard. Too hard. Explore the untrodden wilderness of the African landscape, the brochure had said. Experience the beauty that is Africa and find yourself. For the 15 young explorers who set out on this trip, it was to become a journey to hell and back, a true voyage of discovery. It had seemed like such a good idea. To take a 12-ton Bedford lorry through 2,500 kilometers of African bush, boldly going where no overland trucking expedition had gone before. But however naively bold the team might have been, the going was rarely easy. We've been struggling as always. We uh, just come up a very steep hill, it's taken us two or three hours. And coming down the other side, it's dark now, we've got a precipice over on the, on the right hand side. We just came across this tree stump, we got caught up, so we've been trying to get away from this, the lorry keeps sliding further towards it. We finally got ourselves in a position where we are, we are clear, but it's, it's half eight now, we're thirsty, tired, hungry. So I think uh, the decision's going to be to, to make camp here now. For this Trans-Afrique expedition, the heart of Africa was turning out to be both cruel and unforgiving. Um, oh, we fucked up. We messed up here. We like built the road to get out, but we missed missed the road driving up, and then like all this mad going backwards and forwards. We just like drifted right off the road and got stuck. And I think we stuck in the swamp now as well. So we got to start all over again. But no. Six short weeks ago, it had all begun as an extraordinary adventure. Fifteen young and not so young Europeans had decided to invest three months of their lives and 1,500 pounds of their savings on the expedition of a lifetime, deep into the heart of Northeast Africa. As the would-be adventurers checked through customs in Nairobi, their eagerness was untainted, their expectations high. Already, it was a far cry from the comfortable and ordered world they were so enthusiastically leaving behind. I've just finished now six years in Cambridge. The last three of them I've been doing my PhD. I've just finished writing it up, and here's my thesis. All 185 pages of it. So I'm now going to submit it, and I'll take it into the Board of Graduate Studies, and now I'm finally finished. I hope I get on well with the other people. Uh, this is my, maybe one of the things that I'm a bit worried about, perhaps, about the expedition, if, you know, if we don't get on as a group of people. I'm hoping that we'll get on fine or get on well. But I, you know, I know there's going to be, there's going to be problems, there's going to be arguments for rows or bastards and things, I'm sure. But hopefully, um, hopefully not too many. Hopefully the good times will outweigh the bad. I'm really looking forward to going to Africa. It's somewhere that I've always wanted to go to. I used to, I went travelling before, and Africa was somewhere that I never actually made it to. So 
I'm really excited about going. I'm also nervous as well, because I love my job here, so it was quite a big decision to give this up. Yay! 31,950. Now, I had a buyer on this. We actually did have three people wanting to buy it. In fact, the uh, purchaser or the prospective purchaser on it actually offered... I've been free. doing the job for five and a half years now. Um, it's a good job, but it's very hard and demanding. Uh, it can be very stressful sometimes, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, so I suppose I'm the archetypal uh, Margaret Thatcher 1980s yuppie. Hi, Mark. Good to see you again. Good to meet you. Nice to see you. Got a set of details. Thank you. I'll let you in. Okay. There we go. Well, I have uh, great expectations. I think it'll be a fantastic adventure. Um, very, very excited about it. Um, very much looking forward to seeing the scenery, the wildlife, the people, and hopefully get some uh, good photographs. Um, I just think the the sheer excitement of, of testing yourself and also the group of us, how we all cope with the various conditions that we'll, we'll be uh, dealing with. <laughs> so I want to have a good time, but I think also you've got to look on the point of... It's, going to, it's obviously going to mature me, I think, so I don't think that's such a bad thing, really. Go off to university. Um, mature and sort of find out a bit more about myself, I think. I think Africa will definitely change me. I'm not exactly sure how and in which way, but considering the furthest I've been so far is to Spain for a two-week package-type holiday, it's going to be uh, a little bit uh, more exciting than that, I think. A 12-tonne Bedford truck was to be the vehicle for most of that excitement and much of the aggravation. The expedition leader was Dave Barton, once an electrician in Northampton, but now a seasoned overland explorer. We're obviously going to get problems along the way, but hopefully they won't result like this, you know? We've done a lot of work on the truck, or I've done a lot of work on the truck, and some of the guys have mucked in and out, um, refitted the back out for various reasons, and hopefully tomorrow she'll be singing like a new one. To ensure that the expedition would be blessed with the goodwill of the spirits of travel and exploration, Dave Barton invested a few Kenyan shillings in a little local magic. Time would tell whether the magic was going to be needed and whether it would work. It was to become clear that, secretly, some of the group were hoping that the next three months would be a welcome escape from the personal pressures of home. For others, it was the innocent and carefree beginning to a voyage of discovery. The first leg of the expedition took them north from the Kenyan capital of Nairobi towards Lake Turkana, near the Ethiopian border. On the way at the tiny village of Rumeruti, they decided to stop and pick up some fresh food from the local market. Okay. It was the Africa they had expected to find, although not everyone realised that a fresh chicken is a live chicken, which someone would have to kill before it could be eaten. Do you buy chicken from the shops? What's the difference? It's been slaughtered for you, though, eh? Hello? It was also clear that this was the Africa of the TV newscasts. Impoverished old women, destitute and hungry, were drawn to the magnetic prospect of a mouthful or two of food. It was an awkward encounter which satisfied nobody. We have to buy for two days. Right, so this is dinner tonight. Um, we bought this on the market in, in uh, Rumaruti, uh, northern Kenya, and the girls who are going to cook the meal tonight was in a bit of a uh, bit of a squander about whether to buy the chickens or not because they didn't want to kill them and prepare them for the pot. Um, we did buy four of these. They're not all that big, but they'll feed all of us. Um, quite cheap because the the next few days and, and maybe week or ten days, 
we don't know whether we're going to be able to buy any meat from the local markets in Ethiopia. So we should really get now eat as much meat and get as much protein so everybody's fit and healthy for the coming sort of two, three weeks ahead. I think that's what you call a dead chicken. Yeah, you got really swing. You've got to swing the knife from above your head and it would come straight off. That's it. That's a static. Put the great in Britain. Head's still going, mate. Fair play too. <sighs> I'm not sure I like that too much. It's yeah. not very pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Not too nice for me. You're like not going to make a cereal for you. <laughs> cereal <laughs> chicken. I'm yeah. bloody glad about that. I was on the truck with you for 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's probably easier with a bigger block, but if you hit it hard enough, it'll, yeah. you know, it'll either break its neck and sever its, its tendons mm -hmm. to its brain. Right, pluck them and cook them. You can get really male about this now and give them to the, to the girls to pluck. Pluck them, skin them and cook them. Nah. It's not too difficult. Not that one. That's really... Sorry. Something's happening, isn't it? I reckon you're doing rather well. Is that down the front? It's just on his belly, yeah. Oh, it's all wet, though. Yeah. Can't that easy, You've got should, to mate. get into it, haven't you? You're not, you're not sort of mess about, you just get stuck in, man. Gruesome. <laughs> yeah. So the veggies aren't happy. <laughs> Are you? Are you I'm not bothered. No. Not bothered at all. You eat, you eat, no, what she you eat. She, she's not happy at all. She looks so dry like it. <laughs> I probably will. And they had quite a long wait till they were killed, which yeah. I thought was quite horrible. And peas, I'll sit about them peas in the morning. I think we need to make some more marinade. Within a few days, the group had decided to strike out on a different route, one which Dave Barton had never explored before, north across the Chalbi Desert. There, in a landscape renowned for its scorpions and skeletons, they met two teenage Samburu tribeswomen who were happy to hitch a ride to the nearest watering hole a few miles further on. <laughs> What they made of the chewing gum Roger gave them was difficult to determine. <laughs> but they kept the packet, so maybe they liked it. As the tiny village neared, seven days into the expedition, thoughts turned to a cooling dip in the soft green waters of the oasis and a chance to relax before the next leg of the trip. It was a romantic spot, and already there were a few romances in the air. Oh. 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 Well, I suppose I'd better get the rest of this shopping unpacked. After all, she did buy me those jelly babies. By choosing all our Safeway savers, instead of the most popular alternatives in store, you could cut your shopping bill in half. In half? I should have held out for a sherbet dip. Safeway savers, lightening the load. With direct debit, you can spread payments on hefty bills. Now, that takes the heat out of it. Ain't no IOUs when you pay DD. The thing about new beef burger flavor monster munch is that they're so, so <laughs> big. Oh my. Whole half quarter pounder. New beef burger flavor monster munch. They're monstrous. Oh, it's time for changing your lifestyle and getting healthy. Here we go. Healthy? That's an idea. Kellogg Brand Flakes are an easy way to get into a healthier lifestyle. Let's go for the fun! They have more fibre than most other cereals. They're low in fat, but taste great. Well, I think I'll go for the burn tomorrow. Kellogg's Brand Flakes, a step in the right direction. Sir? What's the matter? You a bit short? I pay a bit more for my branded powder. Because it's got stain digesters. So is my new surf. Mine's biological. 
Just like surf. Well, mine works at low temperatures. So does mine. But mine costs me less. And if you're not happy, Lever Brothers give you your money back. They don't. They do. Ta. Smarty pants. Have you ever stopped to think about the torture that your hands go through every day? Skin Science Update from Vaseline Intensive Care. Because your hands are the most active part of your body, they should have a more active kind of skin care. Vaseline Intensive Care Dry Skin Formula is absorbed in seconds, and because it locks moisture into your skin, it goes on caring for hours, helping to protect even the hardest working hands. From intensive research comes intensive care. Sun Alliance has some good news for you if you're a safe driver. Like this chap, for example. He's got a three years no claim bonus, no driving convictions, and drives a low annual mileage. This lady's a safe driver too. So's he. So's she. And so's he. Just like these motorists, you could save over 50 pounds when you switch to a Sun Alliance safe driver policy. For an instant, no obligation quote, call Sun Alliance free on 0800 800 200. Qualify, and you'll no longer have to subsidize drivers like Mr. McEvil. That's 0800 800 200. Lines are open now. On selected Safeway savers, you can now buy two and get a third one free. And whose clever idea was that then? Three for the price of two at Safeway. I expect to attain flight in the air. Gus, the only difference between peace and war is where we place our bombs. Everything about it had to be invented. I'm Neil Armstrong. Join me for an adventure through time. A history of aviation. First flights, tonight at 9 on Discovery. On the eighth day of the expedition, the group reached the shores of Lake Turkana, known to paleontologists as the Cradle of Mankind. Unfortunately, the lakeside track was not designed for 12-ton trucks, and before long, Dave Barton was forced to give the order to break out the shovels. At this stage in the trip, hard physical labor was all part of the adventure, and with willing hands and feet, the group set to work. This was the first time they'd had to dig the truck out of trouble. It wouldn't be the last. The remote shores of Lake Turkana are home to one of Africa's smallest tribes, the El Molo. Numbering only a few hundred, these gentle and welcoming people rarely see tourists so far off the beaten track. As the travelers began to set up camp at the edge of the Reed Hut village, it was clear to the group that the El Molo were as curious about them as they were about the El Molo. The El Molo lived by fishing. Indeed, they believe that all of the creatures living in or on Lake Turkana belong to them, including the hippos and the crocodiles. Theirs is an ancient and tranquil way of life, which has fascinated explorers and anthropologists ever since the tribe was first discovered in the middle of the last century.
For the next two days, the Transafrique group enjoyed the simple hospitality of the Elmola tribe by the shores of Lake Turkana. As well as being gracious hosts, they proved to be elegant and considerate people, content to let the visitors into their daily lives and maybe do a little trading also. While Inga was struggling to avoid buying a wedding ring, much to the amusement of her newfound friend, Lewis was trying to take a few names. Can you write your name as well? Yeah. The Elmolo are resilient and adaptable. Over the millennia here in North Kenyan wilderness, they've had to be. But while they will continue to thrive, their unique culture is under threat. Within the last century, their ancient language and much of their history has been lost. They have traditionally worshipped a god called Wak, but now the Catholic missionaries are teaching them about a different one. And some of the children go to a local primary school, where they learn the rudiments of English. Yeah, how do you do the knot? Can you show me? As the group set out to visit an island in the middle of Lake Turkana with their adopted tour guides, some began to realize that they too were the innocent agents of the change that would one day destroy the El Molo culture. These were timeless, magical moments, as Gavin Allen recalls. I remember asking them, do they know any songs? And they, they started singing, and it was absolutely magical when they were sat there singing by the by the water, watching the uh, the fishing going on. So that that really was a the high point for me. It felt absolutely magical. But then, unfortunately, about two days later, I, I came down with chicken pox, <laughs> which uh, was a bit of a downer. It took a, a while to diagnose that's what it was which was a bit worrying because for about four or five days we didn't know what the heck this horrible rash was it, ranging from the ants to flies to heat rash it could have been anything gavin's nightmarish attack of what turned out to be simply chicken box had remained undiagnosed for a week the experience had unnerved the rest of the group it had been a cautionary reminder that out here in the middle of nowhere Falling sick, being weak, or simply lacking common sense can make a person very, very vulnerable. We've got an estate agent on the trip, Roger, who can't put a tent up right. I mean, a guy who's got a degree in nuclear physics don't know that the water runs downhill when he gets it out the back tank. And it's funny, you know, these guys just like real life situations to see them make these little mistakes, it's amusing. But everyone makes mistakes, even Dave Barton. This narrow track through the hills of Marsabit National Park was not designed for the truck's heavy 12-ton feet or her ample girth. <laughs> On foot, the frequent encounters with trees which have fallen across the track are no more than a minor inconvenience. For a truck, it was a different matter. Once again, it was everybody out and all hands to the pumps. After half a day of chopping and tugging, they were off again, ploughing ever deeper into the dense forest. The reason for making this detour from their planned route had been to try and find the legendary Singing Wells of Marsabit, where the Samburu tribesmen come from miles around to water their cattle. The search was arduous and slow. But then, almost by chance, as they entered a clearing in the forest, 
they found what they had been looking for, a group of Samburu warriors tending their cattle at the singing wells. As they went about their work, feeding and watering the livestock, most of the Samburu seemed quite indifferent to the presence of the Europeans. But then, to everyone's surprise, one of the younger tribesmen approached the group and started to speak to them in English. He had learned the language at the local school, and as he explained some of the customs of his tribe to the British women, it was obvious that the two cultures were a world apart. If you get married, that's meat for weeks. If isn't you get it? married, do, do the men and the women have to bring yes. animals? Yeah. And yes. How many and what Eight. kind? Eight. Eight. Well, the, man, Eight. the man gives the woman's family, or the woman gives the man? The man gives the woman's family. Yeah. Eight cows? Yes. Anything else? No. And you have a big Three party? Yes. Ah! Oh. <laughs> 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 Very <Very-made. laughs> <laughs> <Can't Yeah>. fickle. <laughs> He can marry all of us. Yeah? Adding to the vida. He has got enough cows. <laughs> How many cows have you got? <laughs> cows. Leaving the proud Samburu behind, the group pushed on northwards. Kenya had been colourful and friendly and they were all beginning to adjust to life on the road, relaxing into the rhythm of the expedition and the rhythm of Africa. Their route would take them to Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, and then on to the Simeon Mountains in the north. Ethiopia, we was all thinking we might have problems because it's fairly untraveled, you know, there's only the odd handful of people been through here, and these road permits that we've been issued with you know, we was a bit worried that maybe they was going to be present a problem for us at the border. And now we're well into Ethiopia. Like I say, we're 600 k's south of Addis, and the roads improved tremendously. So we can now make some of the time that we've lost. And all in all, I think after 16 days, things are going as well as as well as they would on any other expedition. Everyone had their own grim image of what to expect in Ethiopia, but what they found in the rolling hills of the south came as a surprise to all of them. Coming into Ethiopia, it's not what I expected at all. It's really beautiful and um, so luscious, and I suppose you hear about the famine and everything, and you think that it's going to be um, really barren, but it's actually really beautiful. loads of trees and things, big fields, pe people growing, growing crops and vegetables, farms, plants, plant investigation centres, agriculture centres, the kind of thing you never expected to see in Ethiopia. It was a real eye opener. The only, the only picture or image I had of Ethiopia was the famine ten years ago, Band Aid, Live Aid, starving kids, pot bellies out, and dry, sort of dusty deserts. But, yeah, Ethiopia is nothing like that. Most surprising of all, the Tissasat Falls on the Blue Nile. Local legend claims this place as the original Garden of Eden. But the group were soon to meet up with the Ethiopia they had been expecting as they pressed on northwards through an ancient and sometimes surreal volcanic landscape. A few miles north of Tissasat Falls, they came across a young mother carrying a very sick child. The little girl had a growth in her throat and couldn't take solid food. The mother couldn't afford the bus fare to the nearest hospital, a day's drive away. Immediately arrangements were made to take them there and in less than ideal circumstances, Joanna the nurse tried her best to help. On the truck, you know, our medical kit was very limited 
and it just makes you realise how lucky you know, we are back in England. And because she was very much like you know, one of the children that I look after, you know, at home, that was something I found really difficult. That there was just absolutely nothing that we could do. Mother and child were delivered to hospital in the township of Gondor, not a particularly welcoming spot, as it turned out. Absolutely loads of people piled on the truck and getting hassled. Sort of, you know, they're sort of shouting things out and nobody's laughing, so God knows what they're saying. Yeah, and now we're just, just being like, oh, pain, it really is. So how do you feel? Uh, I don't know, they just wind you up, don't they? I'm not sort of angry at them, they just wind you up. But they don't realise they're doing it, it's just so many of them, so it's hassle. The stick, swatting flies. No, it's, it's uh, a visual deterrent, hopefully. Hopefully. Picture postcard Africa was definitely behind them, and on board the truck, the pleasures of life on the road were beginning to wear a little thin. Fatigue was taking its toll. Moodiness and depression settled on the truck as the days rolled by and conditions became tougher. We need water for drinking, yeah? Where can we find? Where? <laughs> you, you. Personally, I wouldn't be too keen to drink it, but um, mm. it's got a funny smell to it. Mm. <laughs> The days began to merge into each other, and by the beginning of the fifth week, as they set up camp in the Simeon Mountains, morale was low and getting lower. <coughs> the hard work wasn't fun anymore. Cooperation was half-hearted. The team spirit was evaporating. Everyone was tired, dirty, and uncomfortable, plagued with diarrhea and the torture of incessant insect bites. Cliques formed, and as stress levels rose, petty squabbles were becoming serious arguments. I just think people are looking for an excuse to yeah. be pissed off. Yeah, I've yeah, met yeah. lots yeah. of people in this world who aren't happy unless they're unhappy about <laughs> something. And I think I've met quite a few here today and, and in the past four weeks. And I can't understand it. Man, this is Africa. This is beautiful. We're having a good time, are we not? Yeah, yeah we are. Sure well, let's are. Yeah. have a good time. Let's sort <coughs> this shit out, finish it once and for all, make a decision. Not like two Wednesdays or three weeks in, in, you know, in the future, start whinging about it again. Let's sort it, forget it, mm. and get on with let's the trip. Let's make a group. What needs sorting out is this uh, aggro in the back I, of the truck. Or I the think the this bad, the bad vibes in the back of the truck as you're driving along. The what? It's quite the bad vibes in the back of the truck as yeah. you're driving along. Everyone's like asleep or grumpy or yeah. like reading their books. Yeah, the That's last no days, days, everyone, everyone is... Every day. Yeah, but I st all I see here, right, is I do have an opinion. Well, I see... why don't you come down and give us your opinion? I'm not giving it, because all I'm seeing now is that we're seeing two weeks ago. Are people you pissing into the world, <laughs> yeah, people pissing right. into the wind, achieving Thank dog you. shit nothing. <laughs> yeah, Simple as that, so why waste my breath and won't need it on my deathbed? Whatever it was that each member of the group had come to find out here in the middle of Africa, they weren't finding it. Or were they? Quite honestly, I'm finding it all a bit of a strain at the moment. There seems to be a manic quality sweeping the camp. Nobody's happy. Uh, and I really don't know what the problem is with people. It's, uh, as the trip's been going along, it's getting tougher and tougher to fight. It's getting easier to be dragged down by everyone. And uh, I'm finding it really hard going. It's a hard enough expedition for me. Uh, but with the psychosis that's going on with the group, um, you know. But if the relationships within the group are proving tough, the terrain and its local inhabitants were even tougher. That night, shortly after the sun had set on the ruggedly beautiful landscape, the camp was attacked. Drumbeats and chanting filled the air as villagers hurled stones at the terrified travellers who packed up what they could in the dark and fled. I watched them get closer and closer until suddenly I thought, oh no, I'm getting really scared here and that was frenzied, you know. It was like hysteria. And uh, as the light 
came closer from the hill uh, in front of us, chanting happened behind us. So they were obviously as organised as they were going to get. And it was a question of, you know, just get everything together and get out. It got really heavy, you know, I mean, they were just throwing loads and loads of rocks and shouting and screaming and and we uh, everybody wondered what was happening we didn't know who it was whether they got guns whether it was adults whether it was kids or what they're very volatile people i feel and um i'm getting a bit wary of the ethiopians to be honest you know when you see the the, the adults hitting the children the adults throwing stones at the children to keep them away from the truck and then you see the children throwing stones at the animals and now, you know, the locals are throwing stones at us. It's really, there's like a circle of aggression that I'm, I'm not quite happy with. Shocking. It had been a terrifying experience which seemed to draw the group together again. It was a closeness that wasn't to last. There is one man-made achievement big enough to be visible from space. My children's <laughs> friends come round, they can't believe. So it's, but when you watch the... Most basic instinct known to man, to protect. <laughs> Norwich Union, no one protects more. easy way to cross the channel. For your Le Shuttle brochure, call 0990 700 800 or see your travel agent. There is a tyre that gives up to a 5% saving on fuel in comparison with our standard tyres. Michelin Energy, driving down the cost of motoring. the canopy of a million trees. In 400 acres of woodland and water, you'll steal upon the unexpected. Relaxation, exhilaration. This is the magic of center parks. Ring for the brochure, center parks. The British holiday the weather can't spoil. A partner teller's got his own way of getting rid of grease on the washing up. And I've got mine, new formula personal washing up liquid. Take it away, teller. Okay, the easy way is new formula personal. And to prove how easy it makes it, watch this. Its new formula dissolves grease even better than it did before. Great balls of fire. And it's much easier on the crockery. If it's greasy, it's easy with new personal washing up liquid. Mama don't want no greasy food from no cooking oil. Mama don't want no fat on food from no cooking oil. Mama likes a nice cut piece that does not swim in grease. Mama does a mean drumstick without no oil slick. Mama preaches that it's great, cause it's low and saturates. Cause with crisp and dry, the food stays crisp and dry. This was our beginning, and from this we came. 
Over all the years that have intervened, some of us know and some of us have half forgotten, but the sea is there in the blood of man and that blood tastes of the sea. On a planet that is 70% water, seas and oceans have played a significant role in our development. The Blue Revolution looks at how we've used this resource and how it has changed our lives. The mapping of the skies, religious ceremonies, exploration, conflicts, trade, and the migration of humankind are all part of the Blue Revolution, starting Monday the 27th of February on Discovery. Five and a half weeks into the Transafrique expedition, the group decided to leave the Simeon Mountains and head south towards the Omo Valley. And for a while, the going would be easier, but only for a while. A couple of hundred k's further down, we leave this and head down towards the Omo Valley. From there on, the roads will be even worse than this one, and we've got about approximately 1,200 kilometers till we get to Lodwar in Kenya. The state of the roads is what it's all about. I suppose it's an expedition. You know, we want to get to places where the normal travellers can't get. And most people who come and visit Ethiopia fly into Addis and fly around the, all the ancient churches and whatever. And we're doing it the hard way. Travelling south, the rusting evidence of Ethiopia's recent war-torn history is everywhere. From single tanks to entire villages, abandoned and desolate. I mean, you look at it and you think, like, the weight of it, and you think, how the hell does this thing float on water? Oh, well, it's it is airtight. Yeah, it's for size. It's like... Well, it's a troop carrier, basically. You have all your troops at the back. Yeah. Yeah. Paddling yeah. like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With their feet out, paddling. You can get 18 overlanders in it. Spirits in the back of the truck began to revive as the distance between them and the horrors of northern Ethiopia grew. A white dotted track. Although it's better to travel south. Better vibes in the south, I think. 